This has to be one of my all-time favorite engraving effects. This definitely stands out. Hi everybody and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in today's project video I am going to be taking this stainless steel blank and turning it into an amazing finisher metal. This video is going to be broken up into two basic parts with the first one how I generated the cut file for the stainless steel blank and the second part will be in Lightburn software where we take a look at the settings that I use to get a really neat 3D engraving look on the stainless steel blank. Let's get to it. I made the cut file for today's project and ordered the stainless steel blank from Sen Cut Sen. It's a really neat and easy place to generate my cut files and order all within one spot. We'll take a quick look at this. On this page here, we'll see that I can upload my own design file if I wish, or for today's example, they have a parts builder where I can design my part within their software. And here, they have a whole bunch of blanks or templates to start from, and I think this one here closely resembles what I need, which is just a solid metal circle with one hanging hole. Now, of course, this doesn't have the dimensions that I need, so I'm going to go over to the right side and enter in the dimensions that I need. For today's project, three inches. The middle hole diameter, I don't need anything, so I'll enter zero. And then the outside hole diameter for all of these guys, I'll enter in, how about 2.7? Maybe a little bit smaller. How about 2.6? And the hole diameter only needs to be 0.2 diameter. And then the hole count, I'll switch that over to one. And I'm ready to move on to the next step. Here I have a bunch of different options. I wanna use some metal. And I have these different options and I want stainless steel. I have my choice of 304 stainless or 316. Now the vast bulk of projects that I do utilize 304 stainless steel. And here I have all the different thicknesses that I need. And I tend to use 0.074 as my default. From here I can click on next, or I actually have to pick the thickness, and it will instantly give me uh, updated pricing. So if I only order one of these, we're going to be at about five and a half dollars. If I order two of them, the price drops down to 380 each. So very quickly, if we start ordering a lot of these, we start getting some volume discounts. And this is one of the favorite things that I like about Send, Cut, Send is I can design the part in there, but more so I have instant pricing. And lastly, the other cool thing about Send, Cut, Send is it remembers everything that I ordered. That way, when the client comes back in the future and orders more of these finisher metals, I don't have to redesign that cut file. It's already stored at send, cut, send. I just have to pick the quantity and verify the material type and the thickness, and my order is all complete. That way I spend less time in the computer and more time out by my machine creating projects or fulfilling customer orders. Back inside Lightburn software, we'll see that I have updated the work area with today's engraving graphic. This graphic, by the way, was supplied by the client. Now, in order to get everything aligned correctly and centered on my work material, I drew this circle on a tool layer. This happens to be the same diameter as the work material. Now, in just a second, we're going to take a look at the run settings for today's project. Now these run settings are what I'm using on my setup and they may differ than yours. So I'll put up in this corner here all the specifications for this machine. Just know that if your machine is a little bit different, you'll need to have some different run settings. Let's check out the run settings for today's project. The main thing that I'm looking for is offset fill. This is how I get that really cool like 3D engraving effect. When we look at the rest of the settings, I've got 750 millimeters per second, frequency of 85 kilohertz, a Q pulse width of 200. This is a MOPA type laser. If you have a 
fiber type laser, you can still use uh, these reference settings because a fiber laser machine kind of acts like the Q pulse width is defaulted at 200. And my power is going to be running at 75%, and my lines per inch is at 1000. And from here, all I need to do is hit the frame button, get the final alignment, and hit the start button. This has to be one of my all-time favorite engraving effects. This definitely stands out. This finisher metal looks absolutely spectacular. I have another three of these to do along with engraving the backside. I'm going to turn the camera off for that because the process of the engraving and all of the settings are going to be the same as what we just saw. We'll catch up with you in just a few minutes. A few minutes later and all the finisher metals are all complete. It was a lot of fun making these finisher medals, and they didn't take a whole lot of time and the results look absolutely spectacular. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you learned something, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help the laser channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect video content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.